What is up, everyone? I've got some good energy today because I'm really excited about this video that I'm bringing you. Today is inspired from all of the groups that I'm on on Facebook and asking the same question over and over and over again. What case management system are you using? Um, they're posting this stuff on Facebook asking what sort of practice management, document management system that they should implement in their law firm. These are small, tiny boutique practices that don't have thousands of dollars. So I'm always teaching you guys how you can work from anywhere. I might as well show you. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about how I leverage Office 365 and use it as a practice management system. You're probably already using Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and those are in the Microsoft Office Suites environment. But if you upgrade to a business premium plan, then you can leverage it as an office practice management case management system with just a little bit more work. And you can do your contacts and your email management and your documents and have it all on the go for easy access. And you don't have to spend a ton of money doing it. So stick with me today and I will show you how I leverage a simple product for a case practice management system. And by the end of this video, I will show you the price and compare it to these big case management systems that are marketed to many law firms today. You don't need them and I'll show you why. Stick with me today. Okay guys. To get things started off, I wanted to let you know I'm using the business premium plan, which is just a few bucks more than the personal plan. And you'll notice that there's several applications on here that you're already using. You're already using Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. But we have a whole lot of applications here that are available to you that are fantastic resources for leveraging this system as a practice management platform. And to start things off, you're going to want to start with creating a case in SharePoint. SharePoint is your main source and it is your dashboard, if you will. And for purposes of today's tutorial, I've already created a test site for you within SharePoint. That site looks like this. Now it's not going to look like this when you start it, you're going to have to build this up. And that's exactly what I did right here. I put in my case name, my case number, and my judge's information. I have quick links right here so I can quick link to the court's website, I can quick link to e-file, and I can add quick links to anything that I need to. I've imported all of my case contacts so I can have all of my case contacts here and the information within this area. You will notice that this is actually a hyperlink. So if I click on this guy right here, then it will take me to all of his information or I can go back to my home screen. I've also got a case calendar. This is also known as a group calendar. So you have one general calendar within your Outlook and you can import or you can create separate case calendars based on a SharePoint site and you can have everything for that case calendar right here. You can view your upcoming events and you can even view your previous events. For this case, I've implemented Planner, which we'll go over here in a minute. But right here, I have all of my things that I need to do. This is my task management list. For my attorneys, I like to have case management meetings with them at least once every two months. I get to know the tasks that they're trying to do, what's pending, what they need me to do, because in litigation, it's really just an assembly line of things to come to get to the major showdown, which is trial or mediation. So I wanna keep track of everything, and this is basically how I do it. It's like project management for cases. If I scroll down here, I can see recent activity and what I've done in that case, and I've also got all of my documents within these folders right here. And just to go ahead and scroll down, we've also got a comment section. So if I type the at symbol and anybody else on my team, this comment goes directly to them. You'll notice that the top right hand corner, there's a following. It's just like Facebook. You can click this star button and you are following it. 
There are only two members on this site because I don't have to invite everybody from my firm into this SharePoint site. I can only invite the attorneys, paralegals, and secretaries that are working on this case. So it doesn't inundate my practice and this doesn't show up for everybody in my firm when I'm looking at my general SharePoint site. It's only showing up for the people that need access to this site. If we go back up at the top of the page and we hover over this test site, you'll see that this test site actually has an email address that is connected to it. I can also easily toggle through any one of these sections and get to my calendar, get to my notebook, or get to my planner. Now, if I, you see down here I have the documents, but over here on the left, I also have documents right here. So I can just quickly take a look in here and see what documents I've got, or I can go over here to my document section and easily toggle through in that section. What is great about this case is because this SharePoint site has a dedicated email address to it, I can actually send emails directly from this site to my team, or I can CC or BCC this site so that each one of my email communications gets filed back to this site. I don't have any email communications in this site yet, but if I were to click on this conversations tab right here, you'll notice that it migrates me to Outlook Office 365. Because I just set up this, this test site, I only have the one email right here which tells me that I am able to join this group. So going back to the test site, you'll also see that there's um, a, a section right here for Teams, for Documents, for Notebook, for Calendar, for Planner. So if I click in that notebook, it'll take me to the online notebook. Now I can open this in OneNote, which will download it onto my computer. I can also download it onto my tablet, and I can download it onto my phone. Now, because I still have data limitations on my tablet and on my phone, even though that I technically have an unlimited data plan, I still only want to keep key things in the OneNote, which are all of my indexes. And if you look on my other videos, I show you how to map your indexes to where they are on your network and where they are into your cloud environment. If you are using Office 365, your cloud environment is OneNote. And within your document section, that's actually where all of your documents are kept. It's within OneNote. For instance, I have a pleadings index right here. You'll see that this is an active hyperlink for the complaint. So if I click on that complaint, it will take me to the SharePoint site, which opens up the documents, and there you go. There is my pleadings index. What's great about this platform is that it is auto-saving. So if I were to put anything within this pleadings index, you'll see that it's actually saving. I don't have to separately save this document. It's auto-saving for everybody in my team to access at any point in time. So this pleadings index that you see in Word right here is really just a test document that I wanted to be able to map back to because I don't have any pleadings in my test case but you can see how versatile this system is, how connected it is, and how easy it is to work with all of your team members. At the upper right-hand corner, I can share this particular document with someone after I've modified it, or I can even post comments to people within my team so that they know what's going on with this particular document. So another thing that you will notice is that you have tabs up here. Each item that you click on within your SharePoint site, it goes into a separate tab. So you can easily toggle back to your original test site, which is right here. So let's talk a little bit about case management. 
whenever you go into a paperless environment, which is what mine is and what I encourage everyone to go to, I find it that it's harder to manage your cases because you have less visual cues. And that's where these case task lists right case tasks list come in handy right here. So if I open up my planner, I can actually take a look at all of my cases. And I can add a new task list. I can move something to pending right here. I can look at it as a chart. I can look at it um, as a schedule and look at the calendar right here. But I can manage things quite easily right here from the Planner Hub so that I can manage my case and manage everything that's going on in my case. For instance, right here, I've already prepared the HIPAA. I've got it to the client for signature, but she hasn't returned it. And as soon as she does, I click this check button and it shows that it's completed. So I've navigated back to my SharePoint test site and I want to go into documents here to show you a really cool tool and that is Microsoft Flow. Now, Microsoft Flow deserves a video all within itself, but what I wanted to show you really quick is in document production here, and any one of these folders really, but document production is a big one because if I'm not on site with the attorneys, they still want to know when opposing counsel has answered discovery and what documents they are producing but I don't always have time to send them an email and let them know when documents have been produced. So what I can do is I can create a flow. I want to send a customized email when a new file is added to my document production folder. Like I said, I can do this for any one of the folders and it automates that email so that I don't have to separately send it out. That is a great, efficient tool for any paralegal. So going back to my home page for this site, you can see how everything that you need is within this site. Now, you're probably saying, well, what about our billing? Well, if you go back to your applications here, you will see that there is an invoicing tab. You can use this or you can use any other platform that crosses with the Office 365 groups here. There are all sorts of applications that integrate within this platform. Going back to our test site, say for instance, you don't want to use Planner and you'd rather use something that you're already using. For instance, you're using Asana as project management, and so you really don't need Planner. What you can do is you can add that item into your SharePoint site. Right here, there is a way for you to import, import Asana. As you can see here, we've also got Bing Maps, We've got a countdown timer. You can add a Facebook page. Um, you can add Google Analytics. There is just so much here that Office 365 works with for you to be able to integrate into your SharePoint sites. Uh, there's Twitter, there's Wonderlist. Um, you don't have to use Asana or Planner. You can use Wonderlist. There's YouTube. If you wanna put out some YouTube videos um, for your attorneys, or for your staff to um, train them on something, then you can do that. So there's all sorts of integrations here within the Microsoft Office 365 platform. You don't just have to use the Office products and what's available to you. You can integrate with products that you're already using. Okay. Now you've seen what Office 365 looks like on your computer. Now let's check out how it looks on your devices, on your phone, on your tablet. But before we do that, I wanted to let you know that if you want your cases on the go, all of the applications that you're using on your computer must be an application on your phone. So you need to download SharePoint, Outlook, OneDrive, 
planner if you're using it, but all of the applications that you're using on your desktop computer, you have to have it on your phone and on your tablet in order to be able to use it on the go. All right, so let's see how this looks. So using my iPhone 7, this is how my site looks on my phone. It's almost just like how you saw it on your desktop computer. You have your quick links, your case contacts, your case calendar, your case tasks list. You can scroll over to see the pending items. And if you scroll down further, you can see your activity as well as your documents you'll see that there's those three little lines in your upper left hand corner which if you'll press it opens a side view of everything that you have available on your desktop. If I click in the document section you'll see I've got all of my document folders right here. If I open up my client documents you'll see the template document that I put in there. If I open up that template document it navigates me to OneDrive which will open up that document and there you have it on the go just like you want it. If I navigate back to my test site and I want to open up my notebook and check out the different tabs and indexes I have in there, open up the pleading section, tap on the pleadings index, and there you go. I click on the hyperlink for the complaint. I go ahead and open that document, and there you have it. Right there is your pleadings index, once again, on the go, just like you want it. I can choose to print it, make it available offline, delete it, I can share it, I can email it to anyone. Okay, now you've seen how versatile this platform is and how you can leverage it as a practice management system. So let's compare it with other cloud environments that are used as practice management systems that are specifically marketed towards law firms. So here are a list of platforms that I went out and found that are mentioned the most on social media. TrialWorks was obviously the most expensive. My case was coming in second at $29 for staff members, $39 for attorneys. But regardless, once you take a look at Office 365s, you will be amazed. Drum roll, please. The price for a premium plan for Office 365 is $15 per month per user. So if you only have a couple of people that are using this platform, it's a very cost-effective solution for a practice management system for your firm. Now, I know that a ton of people in law firms are very frustrated by the fact that these other platforms that you saw before this clip are showing that, that you need additional money in order to upgrade, or you need a different server, or you need this, that, or the other, and you don't need that with Microsoft Office 365. Whatever they're doing with their upgrades comes with your business premium plan. You don't need to get a new server to house your cases on an case management system that is cloud-based. So I hope this brought you guys some more information on how you can leverage Office 365 as a case management, practice management system within your office that is cost-effective and a wonderful solution for being able to work from anywhere. Okay, so if you want some more information about how to actually build each one of your cases within Office 365, I want you to reach out to me on my website. I've got online career coaching. If you're a law firm, you can contact me with your project um, or with all of your cases that, that you need contained within a case uh, SharePoint site within Office 365. I've also got a package set up on my one-on-one -on -one coaching session that is a VIP four session package plan. And within those four sessions, I can completely transform your practice into an Office 365 environment to allow you to work from anywhere. Because that's it, that's the goal, that's what I wanna do. I want everybody to be able to work from anywhere. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching me today. As always, I want you guys to click that subscribe button, follow me on social media, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day, rest of your week, and a fantastic weekend. All right, guys, see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.